Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first Two Minute Tuesday tip of 2020. This tip is going to piggyback from what we did last week. Uh, last week, if you remember, if you haven't seen that video, please go ahead and check it out. It was tip number 103, but this one is uh, 104. And last week, what we did is we created a business rule that essentially would mark the address fields as required if a contact was not connected to an account. But once we selected an account in this case, as you can see, then the fields will become not required. So that is the business rule we created last time. The thing about business rules is that by default, let me go back and navigate to the business rule to show you this. By default, you notice that the scope in which this business rule will run will be all forms. So all of the forms for the contact entity will actually run this business rule. The problem is that when you run a business rule, you actually get a choice on where and how that business rule is going to run. So by default, most people don't even notice that they can change the scope to one of three options. So let me deactivate this and let's start the countdown and let's go. Let's talk about scopes of business rules. So like I mentioned, most people leave it in all forms, which is good. That means it's going to work in all the forms that you have for that particular entity. The problem with that is that when you leave it in all forms, you miss out on the ability to not only pick a single form, maybe you have you know, a form that is only for, let's say, the marketing team and you only want that business rule to execute on the marketing form, or you have a form for the IT department or something like that and you want a business rule to execute on that particular form. But the most important part is that whether you're executing it in one form or in all forms, like you notice that I have selected here, you will only make that business rule work as if it was a JavaScript piece of functionality. And when you use JavaScript in forms, the one of the requirements for the JavaScript to work is that the fields that are involved in the JavaScript must be present on the form or else you're going to get an error. And a lot of you have seen those errors before where it says, you know, object null or not found or something like that. Now, business rules are a little bit better in that regard, meaning they will just not work. They're not going to throw errors, so the, the, the actual users are not going to get alarmed by it, but they will not work, so they won't do whatever whatever it is that you're trying to, to make it work or you're trying to make it do. So one of the solutions, if you need to run a business rule behind the scenes, meaning not having that requirement of having the fields present on the form, and that happens a lot with business rules that are doing calculations, for example, they just run behind the scenes, typically in fields behind the scenes, and you don't, you don't really need to have them on the form, then one of the solutions is to switch it to entity, all right? So when we switch the scope to entity, what happens is, is that the business rule now runs like a plugin rather than a JavaScript script, which means that the fields no longer have to be present on the form. This rule will execute no matter what. So in this case, as you can see, I just changed the scope to entity, which is now essentially converting this to run instead of running, you know, on load or on change the way a JavaScript would work. This will run based on, you know, what a, a plugin will run based on an event essentially taking place, which is kind of the same with JavaScript. But this will work regardless if the fields are on the form or not. So as you can see, I'm going to refresh this just to show you. It works the exact same way. The behavior is the same. So now I have a datum corporation. The fields are not required. I take it off and the fields are required. So there's no difference on switching from having it run as JavaScript versus having it run as a plugin. But you do protect yourself when it comes to not having to have the fields on the form. Because what we know is that if we place the fields on the form, if you're using a tool like, for example, uh, level up, which we have described in the past, people can go into God mode and surface those fields that you're hiding behind the scenes. So I'm not a big fan of leaving fields, you know, hidden just in the in the form. They're kind of in plain sight if you know how to see them. So because of that, I rather you create rules based on a entity level scope, which means the fields don't have to be on the form. So I hope you enjoyed the tip. Sorry, we went a little bit over two minutes, but we'll see you next week.